So excited to have Carol on today. She has one of the most incredible testimonies I've literally ever heard. She overdosed and went to hell. You guys know my story. I was an atheist, had an encounter with Jesus. He showed me heaven and hell. I had, I, I was, I seen hell in a dream, but Carol actually went there because she overdosed and she died. Carol, I wanted to just jump into your testimony. It's one of the most incredible ones. So go for it. What happened to you? Okay. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, I was 15 years old and I went to a party down the street. Uh, my mother finally allowed me to go to this party. I was, she was very strict and it was during the day, but it was going to continue until the evening. But it was because she knew the, the mother and father, but she, what she didn't know was that they weren't going to be there. But anyway, it was like, um, I went to this party with my girlfriend, which was older than I was uh, by three years. And her boyfriend was four years older and he drove us to, uh, about three or four blocks down the street or down, you know, um, close to where we lived in Corona. Anyway, um, we get there and I get handed a drink and um, it's uh, one of those Tupperware glasses that are eight ounces, you know, and a pastel colors. I'm sure a lot of you remember what they look like if you're as my age or close to my age. Anyway, um, I get handed this drink and because I've never had a Bacardi and Coke, I didn't know what it tastes like. Um, I kind of sipped and, and realized that it was bitter. But I thought, okay, I don't know what it tastes like. So I'm just going to be a part of this group. You know, I was new in town. I, I was going to get ready to go to their school. And, you know, so I wanted to get to know people. So I thought, you know, if, if I just hang out with these people, maybe, you know, I'll be cool just like them. And, and we'll, you know, just start, um, I, I'll get to meet, uh, meet people. What happens is that I take a couple of sips. And as I sip, I start to feel a little funny. And I, I would say maybe about an ounce and a half or maybe two ounces that I had already drank. And I'm, I'm there with the crowd and I'm, I'm looking at people and I'm thinking to myself, why am I feeling this way? I couldn't understand why I, I began to feel as if I, I was becoming like paralyzed. Like I, I couldn't really talk, but I felt this anxiousness, just this anxiousness. So I started to run home. I, I told my friend, I'm leaving. I, I can't stay. I, I feel funny. I don't know what's going on. She goes, oh, it's just the, the alcohol. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I kept saying, no, something's not right. So I ran home. I ran about three blocks home. I get home. My mother's sitting there with a couple of friends and they're having their little drinks, you know, having um, uh, her her wine that she was drinking. And and I looked at her, but she she didn't notice that I had walked in behind her. I'm standing by the refrigerator door and I'm looking and thinking and, and, you know, yelling. Actually, I was yelling, mom, something's wrong with me. Help me, help me. Something's wrong. And my mother said, I mean, my mother's sitting there and finally she looks back and she says, Carol, what are you doing? And she, I couldn't talk. I tried. I couldn't talk. I just felt like I was stiff. I was just standing there. So as I'm standing there, I could hear everything. I could feel everything, but I felt like I wanted to fall asleep. Like I just wanted to go to, go to sleep. I felt this like overwhelming feeling. And I kept thinking, I'm just tired. Maybe I should just go to bed. So anyway, my mom's looking at me, you know, and, and she gets up and she walks towards me. And I, I'm a talkative person, you know, she's just and sm always laughing, you know, and, I, and she walks up to me and she says, Carol, what's wrong? And she kept saying that. And finally, a tear rolled down my face. And she knew then that something was wrong. I couldn't talk. I couldn't say anything. She picks up the phone and she says, you know, she calls 911. 911 says, well, you know, it could be that she's done something. She's taken drugs or, you know, something. And, and my mom starts thinking that if she puts her finger down my throat, I'll throw this up. And, and and she keeps, you know, gagging me, trying to get me to, to, to vomit and nothing's happening, but she's panicking. I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. Like, First, it, I feel like I, I have this this feeling of, of burning inside. And then I start to my mind was like wanting to it just kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. I, I at this time, uh, we had been renting a house that the Red Cross had given us because our house had burned down and um, and they had given us these mattresses. So, they, you know, to, so that we could have in our in our well to sleep on. And I went to this mattress and I slate, laid on the floor. My sister, who had received Christ a, a couple of weeks prior to, she ended up, um, well, uh, you know, well, crawling over to me on the floor. And all I remember her saying was, Jesus, please don't let my sister die. 
I had I had just received Christ one week prior to at a at a gathering. Yeah, at a gathering at a park. And you know, when when we live in this world, I felt as if I have always known there was a God because something created the heavens and the earth, but I never had a personal relationship with Jesus. You know, um, I remember things happening to me as a, a young girl, and I remember that some something was always with me. I felt like like one time I almost fell off a roof and, and something held me from falling off. I was five years old and, and, and sat me down. So I felt I felt like I believed in angels even then at five because something's kept me from falling off this roof. So anyway, back to my story. My mother calls 911. My sister prays over me and says, God, please don't let my sister die. Uh, I hear the ambulance coming. I hear a commotion, people running all over the place. My aunt's panicking, my sister's panicking, everybody's panicking. I could hear everything going on. And the reason I say this is because I want you to know that I was in my right mind still. You know, I could hear everything. I had all my senses. I, I knew who I was. I knew everything, except that I felt this heaviness. I just wanted to go to sleep. I felt like my body was just like giving out, just wanting to go to sleep. I hear the ambulance, uh, the paramedics walking in the door. I remember that they picked my body up. Uh, I felt like I was just heavy. I, I lay on the on the gurney and they wheel me out. My thoughts were, oh my God, all my friends are gonna see me. The whole neighborhood, I had just moved into this neighborhood. There was a lot of stu people that were gonna be in school with me and I was embarrassed. So I was just thinking of the embarrassment of, of everybody in the neighborhood seeing me be wheeled out into this ambulance. As they put me in the ambulance, I began to hear my mother crying and, and I forced my eyes to open and I could see all the commotion, people around me. The paramedics uh, guy puts in the, the IV. I remember back then that he had put the IV in, the needle was in my arm and the tube came undone. And I remember the blood squirting on the side of the of the ambulance and, and he's like cleaning up and trying to, you know, I guess panic because I was young and, and my blood pressure, I don't know what he knew about my life at, at that time, but I just knew Either he was a rookie or he was nervous. One of the two, you know. So anyway, as as he uh, as as they're doing this work on me, I no longer hear anybody. I my eyes shut. I can't open my eyes. I remember that I hear no no more noise. I'm completely just in in you know uh, completely can't hear a thing in darkness. Is how I felt. I'm being wheel. I mean, I, I could hear the wheels in the ambulance turning as if I was in a train. I could hear, ch -ch -ch, you know, so I, I started to think, but I'm in an ambulance. I'm a 15 year old having all these thoughts. Right. And I'm thinking, but I, it sounds like a train, but I'm in an ambulance. So anyway, I get to the hospital. I don't remember what happens from there to the hospital. When I'm in the hospital, I force my eyes open. And my thought was my hair was so long that I kept thinking the wheels on the gurney are going to get caught. My hair will get caught in the wheels. So I'm thinking this and I'm looking around and finally I could open my eyes a little bit more, but I'm looking around and all I see is the white walls. You know, the, 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 the I knew it was in a hospital. It looked like a hospital. It, everything around me was looked like a hospital, but then all of a sudden, I start to feel as if something was coming between the breast and the stomach area. I felt my, my spirit forcing itself out of my body. I felt this pain coming out of me. And all of a sudden the pain was on the right side of the corner where, you know, I'm looking up and all of a sudden I feel myself leaving my body and I'm staring from that corner, looking down at my body. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this only happens in movies. This can't really be happening to me, you know, because I know as you know, I, I've, I've seen this on TV that, you know, people die when this happens, when they when their spirit leaves their body. The, am I dying? And I started to freak out. I started to think, oh, my gosh, I'm dying. I'm dying. And when I thought about death, I felt as if, you know, something fear came over me, a, a, an overwhelming fear came over me and I could hear the doctor's talking to patients. I could hear people talking to each other. I could hear every sentence as if, you know, it was just one person talking. And I thought to myself, you know, I've always, like I said, I've always believed there was a God. And I thought to myself, that's how God hears all of us. But, you know, I, I started to wonder 
if now I'm, I'm completely dead. When I, that fear came over me, I felt the fear come in as if it dragged me back into my body. It was so heavy. It felt like it just, that fear was so ugly that it just fell back into my body. When I fell back into my body, I felt like all of me, not, not the separation any longer. I felt like all of me, the body and soul and the spirit fell and I began to fall as if somebody had dropped me out of an airplane. I felt so hard that I felt like my bones and my joints were going to break and fall apart. You know, I was just falling. I was so scared. And all of a sudden I entered into a place that I just knew I was in hell. I had never read the Bible before. I remember just the words, you know, people saying go to hell or, you know, words like that. But I never knew the meaning of hell. I never even believed that there was such a place. I mean, I didn't even think about it. And I thought to myself, as I'm falling, I'm thinking to myself, oh, no, this is for eternity, because that's how I felt. I felt as if there was no way out. I was never going to leave this place. I began to feel like the walls were coming closer as if it was breathing and, and, and separating. I felt um, like there was souls embedded into the walls around me because that's how I could feel them so close to me. But yet I could feel like it was such a huge place. It was like so heated. I, I should have melted my, my, my skin. My body should have fallen apart because that's how hot it was in there. The, the, I, th I, I want to say that the worst thing was that that I couldn't breathe for once. It felt like there was no air. The other thing was the heat was so you know tremendously hot, and um, and the hatred. Oh my gosh, the hatred to me was like the worst part of it. All the hatred was so ugly. I felt like, and and I could hear the people around me screaming and just just crying, and I could hear people cursing God. I could hear people first scriptures and then all of a sudden cursing the Lord. And then all of a sudden I could, I could hear just the cries of torment, people being tormented. I never forget one cry. I, I, I tell people that, that since this experience, that the one thing that kept me, I believe always coming back to God and repenting was the fact that there was a woman that I, I know it was a woman because I could hear her scream. It was just horrifying. I, I, the only thing I could imagine was that they had put her on a stretch bed and they were tearing her apart, that they were just tearing her apart because that's how intense her cry was that I felt it to the, to the bone, to the marrow of my bone, because it was just so horrifying. But I also remember that as I was falling, I never hit rock bottom. The Bible says that there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that there's the bottomless pit. I had never hit the bottom so but I kept falling and as I was falling I was experiencing like different places of hell it was just so horrifying and I remember crying out to God because it's like I said I've always believed there was a God and I started to cry out to God and said God God help me help me what did I do what did I do and I thought to myself I don't belong here this is not for for somebody like me I, I wasn't such a bad person I, I I didn't do anything to anybody I, I I and then I started to wonder if it was because I had taken the drink and I thought to myself well it, it wasn't even that much you know as a teenager you you, you know you 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 think this way. And I started to just cry out to God. And I just said, God, help me, please help me. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. And I remember just crying, but I kept feeling the, the, the hopelessness that that was it for eternity. I was never going to leave this place. And I wanted out so bad. And I kept saying, please, God, get me out, get me out. What did I do? What did I do? And as I cried out, I know now that when I cried, I cried from the heart. I felt that God heard my cry because it was um, so real that I, I cried out with all that I had. And I said, Lord, get me out. Get me out of here. Get me out. And I remember from one second to the next, I was out of that place. I was just completely out. I didn't feel that hatred, that horrifying place. It was just awful. But I was in awe by where I was because where I ended up was in a place of I didn't see pearly gates. I didn't see, you know, uh, uh, streets of gold. I didn't see castles or angels or nothing like that. I was just in another room where 
it was like, like in the air, but I knew it was a closed place. I felt like there was a wall that we were not allowed to leave, to get up and wander around because I could feel the presence of two other souls on the side of me. I didn't bother to look who they were because I didn't care. I was just so relieved that I was no longer where I was, you know? And in this place, I was on my knees. I knew I had a robe on, you know, mid calf. How I know that, I don't know, but, but I know I had a robe on there was people on the side of me and I know that they were in, you know, the same robes as I was. I remember that, that as I, I was there, I could feel a peace that I had never felt here on the earth. I remember that, that when, when the Lord began to walk into the room, there was a presence that entered. There was a light that came off of lights, colors that I, I don't know how to describe, except that I knew there was a being inside this light that there was a, a, a silhouette of, of a form of a man. And I know now that it was Jesus who walked into that place because as he came towards us, it was like the ocean. It just kept coming. The, the, you know how the ocean just keeps coming and stops and comes and stops. Well, I felt like Jesus love was like that. It was so powerful. It was just so amazing. It was the greatest love I'll ever know. I know I'll never know it here on the earth. I used to say the father of my, my children that passed away now, but he, when, when we were kids, we met as young, young people, you know, teenagers, we fell in love and got married young. I always thought that that was going to be the greatest love I'll ever experience because we truly loved each other, you know, but it's not God's love is so much greater, so much greater. You'll never know that love here on this earth, but let me tell you, it just kept coming and coming and coming. And as he, in, uh, you know, came closer, I could feel his presence. We knew automatically out of reverence or, or respect or whatever you want to call it. You know, I knew to bow before him. I could feel the other two souls bowing too. And as I began to bow down, I remember putting my hands in front of my face, wanting to look. I, I you know, I, I just wanted to see him. I wanted to, to see everything about him. And I had my hands in front of my eyes and I kept looking at him. And I remember when he got closer, I went all the way to the ground I mean all of me was completely flat on the ground and and just in in worship and reverence of who he was and let me tell you as he got closer I could feel his presence so I had to lift my head and I looked at his feet his feet were like bronze almost like the color of you know I'm American Indian and my color is pretty dark but but let me tell you his was like a, a gold and brown and it was so beautiful so shiny so just uh, soft and um, and I saw the robe as he lifted me. He he put his hand on my right side and he, he began to lift me up. And I saw his feet, you know, his his uh, robe. And um, and as I continued to look up, I saw the rope that was around his waist and it was entwined. It was three and it was like tied up in the front and it was like burned on each end and it reminded me of what my grandmother used to tell me that in the olden days that when he she used to own you know um, a, a barn and, and animals or whatever uh, that when they used to tie the animals they used to burn the edges so that they wouldn't come undone and that's what it reminded me but I felt like the Lord was showing me his humbleness towards me that I was no different that he was, he, he made me feel like I was just like him. You know, his robe was the same color as mine. It was like an off white. It wasn't pure white. It was off white by, by this time I could see a bean. I could see his robe. I didn't see all the other colors. Let me tell you the colors that I saw were colors we'll never see here on earth. The, the, the brightness of, of hot pink was like more prettier, more brighter. I love pink. And, and red was just so red and, and all the beautiful colors. White was just amazing. It was just so awesome. I get excited when I talk about it because I can't wait to get back. <laughs> But let me tell you, uh, it was just so amazing. Colors we, that we see here are not even the colors that are in heaven. They're so much more beautiful. You know, the, the colors there off, that was coming off of him were so beautiful. And, um, and as he lifted me, as he lifted me up, um, I remember him saying, you must go back. You must go back and tell the truth. 
And I was thinking to myself, but I don't want to go back. I want to stay. I want to stay. And he answered me. I didn't even have to open my mouth. He said, but you must go back. You must tell the truth about hell because today the pastors and preachers and teachers are afraid to lose the number. I didn't understand what that meant. The Lord said that it's not taught. It, people are afraid to lose you know, the number in the church, maybe the money, because if people don't come, they don't get money. Or maybe it's the other way around. You know, not that I'm against, you know, giving because we have to. I mean, every place pays electricity and, and a place, right, for a space. But so the pastors do this. But those that are truly, you know, serving the Lord, they they get paid income, right? And, and they pay for the bills and all. But But those that are not. You know, those are the ones that are afraid to lose the number, losing the people. But God showed me that in my dream. And he told me, he says, you must go back now. And as he told me that, I remember leaving his presence. And as I began to leave his presence, I began to just cry out because now I can literally feel the, the tears and the, and the hurt leaving the presence of the Lord. So I must have been out of that dimension of where I was before and leaving the Lord. And I remember feeling the pain of, uh, of where I was returning. And they had this tube down my throat and they were pumping my stomach. And I remember coming back and feeling like I just grabbed the sheet in front of me and covered myself in, in because they had just shocked me. Uh, my mother doesn't remember that I had died or if, if I had truly, you know, left, uh, uh, had a death. But I know that I had an experience. Um, I believe that that what I saw when I came back was them taking the, the things off of me because I remember grabbing the sheet and covering myself. My mother said that that she does remember that it was a tragic time in our lives because now she's 84 years old. She doesn't remember that back then. But anyway, um, she's, she did say that she knows that I went to heaven. I went to hell and I went to heaven because after I tried to tell people and people did not believe me. People would say, oh, there's no such thing, you know, and, and stuff like that. But I remember that when um, I, I had went to my room the next morning, the psychologist and psychiatrist had come into my room. And I remember that they sat on my bed and they said, you know, you need to get off the phone. I remember I was on the phone with my boyfriend at the time. And um, and they said, we need we need to ask you a couple of questions. And then so I got off the phone and he says to me, what is your name? And I said, well, you have my chart. And he goes, we need to ask you questions. We need to know who the president is. We need to know what, what your address is, who your fa family is. We need to know because your nose was completely white. There was so much PCP and cocaine in your drink that it should have killed two large animals weighing 250 pound, uh, uh, pounds a piece. I was 110 pounds. I was 15 years old. I should have died. I should have died. He also said, had you not, you know, uh, I mean, you should be a vegetable. It's a miracle. He said it was a miracle that you're alive today. And he said, tell me, you know, what do you feel? You know, how do you feel? You know, and I, I just said, well, I need to tell you something. I said, when I left this earth and he said, you left, how did you leave? And I said, I know. And I began to tell him my story. I told him that my spirit left my body and I could see myself from the corner of that room. And I was looking down and when fear came over me, I, I felt like my body just my spirit fell into my body and all of me fell into hell. And, and, and he, he, he just kept listening. And he said to me, he said, you know, uh, after I had told him the story, he said, you know, I'll tell you something. Nobody's going to believe you, but I do because I've been doing this job for so long. It took me 30 some years to believe that there has to be a heaven and a hell because of what I've experienced through my patients. He said, honey, not many are going to believe you. And as I grew up, you know, as I, I left that place, I remember thinking to myself, you know, telling my new friends at, at school when the opportunity would come up because I would hear, you know, that people were, you know, living a certain way or doing certain things. I would say, you know, just pray because I don't want you to go to that place. And they used to tell me what place that I used to tell them that there's hell, the hell is real. And they used to say, how do you know? And I would tell it to them. Let me tell you back then it wasn't as um, spread as it is now, I feel like right now the Lord is using this testimony. I have it on YouTube under the number four, R-E-E-L-D-E-E-L, -E 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 through a friend who recorded me for a real deal. 
And um, and I have shared that testimony. He shared it on his YouTube and it has hit over 104,000 views. I have a ministry from that because I leave my number at the end. And I tell people, if you want to repent or if you have questions, please call me, text me, text me. I would prefer that you text because I can respond. I don't want it to be a personal thing. I want it to be where I could just help you with a relationship if you are interested in knowing the truth about hell because hell is real and not many believe and many the bible says that many will will reject him if we reject him he's going to reject us jesus says the judgment day will come you know every one of us he says in his word that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is lord you know and i have a couple of scriptures that people you know are are, are wondering you know that that if hell is real i do have um on Go I googled actually um, it's called the truth about hell by Terry Watkins if anybody has any questions there's scripture there you know you, you can if you if you don't believe in the Word of God you know a lot of people say it was man-made no it was made by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is powerful it's big all by himself <laughs> God is big all by himself but uh, what I want to say is that that you can you can uh, ask God like you know, I didn't know who God was. I didn't know Jesus personally. You know, when I had, when I did give my life to the Lord, because I asked the Lord, Lord, why did I still experience that? I, I accepted you one week before I, I went here to this place. And then the Lord said to me, he spoke to me in my spirit. I felt it in my spirit. He said, because I knew that you would tell it to the world. I trusted you. So I brought you back and I want you to tell people that hell is real. And I know it's real. I, I, you know, since I have surrendered, you know, I didn't surrender my life to the Lord at 15. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I just, like I said, I received Jesus Christ as my personal savior at the age of 15, one week prior to, but nobody, nobody was around to tell me what else to do. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you people, please, you know, if, if you do receive Jesus Christ, find a church, find a, a spirit filled church that preach about Jesus. Jesus is the way into heaven. It's the only way to the Father is through the blood of Jesus Christ for what he did on the cross. You know, that's the only way into heaven. And and I hell was not intended for us. It was not intended for the human race. But because people choose to reject God, this is where they'll go. But anyway, well, he really is. He just desires that we have a relationship with him and he will bless us. You know, John God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. You know, and it's we don't have to do any changes. We don't have to do anything. Just surrender. And he does the rest. You know, he come with your dirty laundry and all. He does it all. You know, I'm not perfect. I still make mistakes. I still sin. I still go through things. But I have hope because I have grace because of who I believe and who I trust. You know, we're not perfect and, we're, and God doesn't expect us to be. People think that Christians have to be perfect, but the world did that. The, you know, the, the, the people that saw the mistakes, you know, uh, none of us will be perfect. It's just a title, but the relationship is what's important. You know, the relationship is not the religion. It's the relationship with Jesus. And, and that's. Wow. Carol, that's so powerful. I'm so thankful you shared this testimony and I think you mentioned a little in the middle somewhere that you, I think you had something said dream. It wasn't a dream. This this really happened. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that really happened to me. It was not a dream. Later on, when the Lord gave me dreams and visions, because He has since has it's like a spiritual something has opened up where I'm having dreams now where the Lord will show me scripture. It's not about you know going back to that place or 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 you know anything else. It's it's and although He does, He shows visions, you know, but. For me, it was a scripture that he came to me in a dream and he showed me a scripture that hell was real because I was beginning to question, could it have been just something that I, you know, came into my mind or whatever, you know, like people say, you know, it, it was, you know, the, the, the drug or whatever, but no, this was real. The Lord, the Lord came to me and showed me revelation that it was in the book of, of, of revelation that, that it's truth that hell is real and there's scriptures on hell and Hades and you know, that the Lord speaks about. Wow. Truly incredible. Carol, thank you again for sharing 
this testimony, truly profound. Um, also, I want to say to a pastor friend of mine, Pastor Ruth, you guys know on my channel, she was in prayer and, and the Lord took her to hell one, one morning, uh, actually evening when she was praying. And the next day she went to heaven. And when she was in hell, she felt her spirit leave her body and she fell all the way down. And just like you were saying about pastors not wanting to lose their numbers, not wanting to lose their money, she heard Christian pastors yelling at Jesus as Jesus was walking by with her yelling and saying, Jesus, I'll give you back the money. I'll give you back the money. You could have it. I'm sorry. I'll you take back the money. I don't want it anymore. So pastors, like we said in the word, Christians, the ones that know the truth, we're held to a higher standard. And there's no one that's going to be able to use the excuse. Well, I didn't know. Well, if you read Romans, you know, you're either, if you don't know the law, you'll be judged. You'll be judged anyway. And if you know the law, you'll be, you'll be judged even more because you know the law. And it's not a joke. This is the time more than ever to know the Lord, know the Holy Ghost and be saved because you never know when it's your time. You'll never know if you, God forbid, go to sleep tonight and you put your head on the pillow and you're 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 in standing in front of the presence of God. Right. So what, what are the last things that you want to say, Carol, before before I let you go? I, I just want to say that I, I'm a normal person. You know, I don't judge. I I. I love people. That's why, you know, I believe that the Lord allowed me to share my testimony because honestly, it was a test, something that I went through. You know, when we go through trials and tribulations on earth, you know, the first thing we want to do is blame God for all the bad things that happen on earth, on earth. But, you know, uh, but we don't blame ourselves for making that decision. You know, God gives us a free will. It's just so sad that, that it goes that way. And, you know, why don't we blame, you know, there is another adversary. There is, a, a, you know, a, 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 what they call another God, which is, you know, if you don't choose God the Father, you know, the Son, the Holy Spirit, then you choose the opposite, you know, which is good and evil. And um, so I just want to say that when I share my testimony, I tell people that I love you. I love you so much that I, I, I share it because I want people to know there is such a horrible place and it's for eternity. There is no coming back. I was just blessed that the Lord allowed me another opportunity to share the gospel, to be able to tell others about him, you know, and, and, and a lot of people that are there today, they wish they had the opportunity to be able to come back and share and tell their family, tell their brothers and sisters and, and your mom and dad, please, you know, there is such a place, you know, that is my urgency that I feel in my spirit today. That because of the things that we're seeing on the earth, that we're seeing changes happening so fast, you know, we don't like what's going on in the earth. We can't control it, but God can. And in, through prayer, you know, we move things through prayer because God does hear us. And, and that's what he wants us to do is to, you know, pray and, and, and you know, and believe, believe, you know, that's the thing. Believe and repent, you know, and, and, and give him a chance. I mean, what's so hard? What do you have to lose but your soul if there is no God, right? Amen. What would you say to people that are watching right now and wondering, you know what? Well, I kind of believe hell is real and I don't know Jesus. What would you say to them right now? I would just say that the, that the first thing is repent. You know, the Bible says that if we repent of our sins, that, that God took it upon himself on that cross. That's why, you know, I, you know, people see the crosses and sometimes they just think it's jewelry and stuff like that. But to me, it means so much more than that because it's what he did on that cross for us to give us a chance, to give us an opportunity to, to make heaven our home, to go back to where we really came from. I mean, the, the, you know, God created the heavens and the earth and everything in it, and he created us. In his image, that's what he says. He desires that we go back to him, to have a relationship with him. So I just tell people, repent. Believe first, because you have to believe. Repent, ask him to forgive you of all, the, all your sins. And then find a church to where you can be fed the word of God. You know, seek the word. I always pray and say, Lord, show me, you know, show me how to understand. Because when I first started reading the word, I didn't understand, you know, what is going on. But, you know, as I continue to pray and ask the Lord to give me revelation to to show me what it means and what am I supposed to be getting out of this? All of a sudden it was like a book. I mean, like a like a. A television I could see and understand I could almost see what's going on as in a vision almost you know like like television you're seeing the characters you're seeing you know the story and and that's how it became real to me you know I I was just you know like I tell people I was you know 
it, I'm not special. There's nothing, you know, extraordinary about me. I'm human just like you. There's nothing different about me. God loves you as much as he loves me. He paid the price just for you, just like he did for me. He's, he's a good God, a merciful God, but he is a God of vengeance and he is a God of judge too, you know, so he is going to judge us in the end, but he will, you know, take us to heaven if we surrender. And, and just by trying to do what's right, we're never going to be perfect. And it's not by works that we get to heaven. It's by faith and by his grace. Just believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and asking him to forgive you and to help you to live this life. You know, we're still going to go through trials, but those trials can be your test. And that test can be your testimony. I've been through things. I've been through a lot of things. I mean, I've also been taken out to be murdered and God spared my life. That could be another story for another time. But God spared my life. And I'm here today to tell you the enemy has tried to take me out. But God says it's not time. And I'm still here to share. And I just love you all. I just pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit would reveal himself to each and every one of you. That if you're willing just to give him a chance, just to find out for yourself that he is real, he will show up and show off. Let me tell you, he he will. Amen. Wow. That's so true. It's what do you have to lose? If you're watching this right now, what do you have to lose? You've tried everything in the world. You're still depressed, unhappy. You're still curious and wondering if God might be real. I always say this. I used to play poker for a living. You are gambling your eternity. You're, you're gambling either eternal life or eternal torment and death. Like Carol said, you repent. What does that mean? Lord, forgive me of my sin. I'm so sorry. I want to know you come into my life. I believe you are Lord Jesus Christ, that you're my Lord and my Savior. I repent and I turn from my, and literally turn away from your wicked ways. And then the Holy Spirit gives you the grace to walk through this life full of joy, full of peace and full of righteousness. And it's all by the Holy Ghost. It's all by what Jesus did. Again, there's no sin that he cannot forgive you for. He's such a good God. Thank you again, Carol. What, what, an, what an amazing, incredible testimony. One of the most incredible I've ever heard. So thank you again for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God is so good. <laughs> Amen. Wow. An absolutely incredible testimony. I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, support the second dot com. Their second amendment store. They have amazing coins over there. And actually this month, just because it's their launch of their new website, you will get a free $25 coin for free if you check them out on supportthesecond.com.